Good morning, folks. Today we've got an increasing watch for the sun, weather notes, earthquakes, and tier one news from beneath our feet out into deep space. We begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on the sun still snappy. That minor coronal hole stream did impact overnight and was indeed minor. Even without considerable eruptions, the northern filament is wanting to release, and the incoming active region on the north is still raising the X-ray flux with a couple small solar flares overnight. The active regions underlying the swirling corona and chromosphere are not tremendously complex, but still, focus goes to the left, incoming at the limit that active region. You can see here where those X-ray flare signatures are coming from, again mostly from the left. Some more on the other half of climate extremes. Snow is rare in the lower altitude regions near Athens. Record cold continues being smashed and with another Arctic blast on the way to the U.S., we should expect a bunch more of that this week. Most important quake of the last day struck Haiti along with an aftershock that ripped down hundreds of homes and killed at least two people. The region did uptick in general yesterday. Let's go next to a fascinating move in the right direction. How about we just toss out planetary tectonics driven by convection? And they make it driven by the sun and the moon. It's literally as though they stick a middle finger up at 25% of the field here and it explains why the crust is slipping on top of the mantle by about 10 centimeters per year. Up next, folks, whether you recall the number one paper on this topic, which pegged the maximum solar flare energy at around X1000 every 6,000 years, or the slightly higher potential power given in the textbook from a few years ago, this one rings in properly. An X2500 flare from a young solar-like star confirms the ubiquity of such flares on younger versions of the sun and fortifies the general principle that G stars like our sun get to this age and then quietly wait for their less regular but equally powerful flare events. And last but not least, literally, I just plugged that Nova Science Deeper Look episode yesterday as the amazing science on Nova keeps rolling in in the morning news. And I had suggested in that episode, I didn't think bigger stars could do recurrent micronova. Well, this is about the speed of the universe these days, isn't it? This star should be even less likely than the sun to have episodic mass loss events, but it's got them. Fried Egg Nebula is at least three shell eruption mass loss events. Folks, the field appears to have picked up the ball and is now in an all-out sprint. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.